Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hey, Craig. How's it going, man? Good. It's great. The weather finally broke here in Pennsylvania. I'm not dying from the heat. I'm here today with Steve McCready. Steve is a coach and the host of the Sensitive Rebel podcast. Welcome, Steve. I want, I'm always, I'm a curious being. I always say, so I'm curious, which works out perfectly because as we were discussing up front, hey, let's talk about curiosity. And I'm wondering, I just like to give everybody like a softball. Like when I say curiosity, what does that, what do you think of when you think about curiosity in the context of podcasting? So for me in the, in the context of podcasting, curiosity is a driving force in the interviews that I do with my guests. It's, it's about an, I like to think of it in a, like an open curiosity, often in that phrase where it's like, mm-hmm. I am waiting for things that kind of ping my interest or attention and will go you know, wonder about them. Like, huh, that's interesting to me. Let me dig a little bit deeper. Let me explore a little bit more there, not really knowing what's going to show up, but finding that if I pay attention to that, that interest, that curiosity that's in my brain, that little like ping, this is, you Mm. know, go, go explore there that almost inevitably there is going to be something that comes out that will be of interest. Yeah. And the curiosity, I I was going to say, it's hard to fake being honestly curious, but there's got to be somebody who can do that. But I don't think I can do it. I'm, that's just generally who I am. So it's, it's like super easy to do, right? You just go like, Hey, that's interesting. (laughs) And point at the thing you want more of. Right. And I mean, I've, maybe I'll have this experience at some point, but I, I don't, at least, you know, with the podcast, I have not had the experience of being, of having a hard time being curious. People are interesting. People have their own unique identities and quirks and things about them. And so there's always, I think, interesting stuff to be found. It's often about just being willing to think for a minute, take things in. And I'm not really conscious about how I go about being curious. So if anyone wants to know my tips for that, I I, I don't, I don't have one beyond like work with people one-on-one and explore, you know, deep things for a long time as I've done professionally, but, um, it's just about paying attention to what sticks out and again, digging a little deeper. So that idea of tell me more, but in a little bit of a more focused and deliberate way, rather than that general one. Although that obviously can work if you're like, okay, I want to, I want to go deeper here, but I'm really not sure where or how. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, I'm glad you brought up the, both the idea of, I don't really know how this trick works. (laughs) Like I I just, I just do it and it works. Um, because that makes me think about how much preparation, you know, I do, how much you do, how much one out there should do. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering uh, you and I had talked a little bit beforehand and you mentioned that you don't prepare a big long list of questions and, and I'm ultra lazy. I don't even, although sometimes I think I really should, I don't even have an opening question ready you know, when I'm doing like big interviews, I'm thinking I probably should at least have a first pitch. Um, so can you, can you talk me through your process of w- mm-hmm. why do you only do a, a small number of questions like prepared that you bring with you? What I find happens if I start worrying about the questions and paying too much attention to the questions, it becomes a distraction from me being present to what my guest is bringing, right? Mm -hmm. I do have an opening question that I always start with. It's really straightforward. It's what are you rebelling against? And depending on what they say, I kind of go, you know, go from there and, um, I'm paying attention to what how that emerges, the context in which it emerges and thinking about, you know, where do I want to, where do I want to kind of wander Mm -hmm. from? Um, I do make some notes to myself sometimes about either certain topics. I just want to make sure that I touch on, or I'll ask my guests, you know, is there a specific area you would like to make sure we give some attention to? And I'll, I'll be kind of, I won't necessarily deliberately go there, but I kind of keep it. It's like in the corner of my mind where I'm aware that that's a place I want to go. And when the conversation wanders into that neighborhood, I'll kind of give it a little bit of a nudge over that way. Mm, A little spring in my step. Yes, we're going this way. (laughs) Right. It's like, okay, oh, cool. We're close enough. Let's just take this little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a pivot (laughs) to the right. And, and there we go. Yeah. Um, I once, uh, most of the interviews that I do for my main project, I do them in person, which I don't, that's a huge, like, that's a lot of work. (laughs) 
<laughs> but I do them that way for other reasons because of how the space it creates and, and how the interpersonal interaction works. Um, but for a while I did, um, last year, I did a challenge to myself, like, okay, I'm going to do 45 minute interviews over zoom calls, which means we're going to have laggy jittery, you know, audio and video. And I thought, how am I going to get up to speed in a hurry? And I picked a question to start with. Um, and my question was, um, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, thinking back on your childhood, what role did movement play as you were growing up, which is sort of modeled around, uh, I, it's Krista Tippett's, um, what role did religion play when you were growing up? Or there's other people who ask questions like, what was dinner? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what was it like around the dinner table at home? And so your question um, about what are you rebelling against obviously plays into um, uh, like, I, if you don't know who Steve is, you're like, uh, how does Craig <laughs> write his website? Um, plays into your focus of what you're doing with your coaching. Yeah. And I'm wondering, do you ever foresee getting personally tired of asking the same question? And, and when, if you think that happens, are you going to just be like, no, I'm going to stick with it and see what happens if I go beyond the hard part of me? Like, I don't know, what are you rebelling against? I, I, I will see, I, I'm not, I'm not attached to it one way or another. It's, I wasn't even attached. Like at first I didn't want to actually have a, a, like use the same question every mm -hmm. time. But, um, going back to when I was doing the podcasting workshop and you know, one of the, one of the lessons, right. Is about generating some questions. And I'm like, just trying to think of questions and, and it completely, it was just completely where I'm like, Oh, I don't know. I could ask them what they're rebelling against. And what I started sharing there with people, they're like, oh, that's a cool question. And did you yes, have the podcast title at that point or? Um, I did have the podcast title already. Okay. I'd known the podcast title for a while. So it, but it was like, okay, sure. That relates to the title. It's kind of fun. Who knows what will come up, but it's been great. And it's funny because even people like guests know now it's, it's no secret that you're right. going to get asked that, right? It's like, <laughs> there's like, there's all, all these other episodes. That it's the same thing every time. <laughs> Sorry, the same thing. <laughs> Right. It's like, so they know, but even then still, sometimes they'll be like, oh, wow. Right. Cause it's, there's something about that question that seems to get people turning inward a little bit and really asking mm -hmm. themselves, right. What am I, what am I kind of rebelling against? What am I, what's, it's really about getting it change, right? What are you trying to, where are you trying to upend or shift the status quo? And mm -hmm. that's, that's really what I'm getting at, but it sounds cooler to say, you know, what are you rebelling against? Yes. Well, there's nothing, uh, I'm a big fan of wordsmithing, you know, for like, what is the, in a good way, what is the surgical best cut that you can make? So what are, what's the perfect, like some words don't work so well when you try and bang them through pop filters and microphones and some have, they're high <laughs> or they're low. So I, I'm totally down with it. It's a great question. I love that it's short um, and that it's concise and, and cogent. Um, but before I distract myself, I was thinking, um, we're talking about curiosity as this like fuzzy magic trick that we don't really understand. Cause I, I really don't understand how my curiosity works. And I'm wondering, are you finding, um, threads in where your curiosity keeps taking you? So if you're, you know, if you're doing these podcasts, which are curiosity driven, are, when you look back now, you're like in the 20, I think I said 20 something, um, when you look is, back, I think, yeah. We'll round up. <laughs> 20, 20, Thank 20, you. 20, I appreciate 20. that. We'll call um, it 20. We'll, we'll, call it 20. Call it 25. Then, um, but when <laughs> you look back, are you are you seeing like, hmm, Steve seems to be drawn to the same things or or is the curiosity just all over the map based on who you're talking to? I I think it varies a lot. There are, there are certain themes that I'm seeing emerge as far as, uh, some of the different rebellions that are going on, right? There are certain <laughs> ones that, that show up, but the context in what they, in which they show up is somewhat variable. And I'm paying attention to where the energy is, is really what a lot of it's mm. about is. So I'm going to follow the energy because m my goal is Yes, I want to to pull out some things from their their story and their experience to serve as possibly a model or an example or an inspiration to my listeners. But I also want to use it as as it's a platform to sh spotlight them 
and I want to let mm-hmm. them be involved in, in what they, what they spotlight. So with some people, we may get way into the personal side of things with other people. It's focused very much on business. Uh, this interview, one of the ones I did this week that'll be coming out is like entirely a business. There's very little about like their, mm-hmm. their childhood or history. And I've had other ones where it's extensively about that. Right. So it can go either way. And it's just about me again, seeing what they're giving me and what, um, and then so partially following the energy, partially following what feels like, oh, there's something here that I think is going to be worth exploring. Um, and I'm sure there's of course my own kind of personal biases or interests that show up, right? Someone will mention something that's a, a topic that I have. I, I interviewed someone this week. He's got you know, in the background, he's got like two guitars sitting there. And so we ended up talking about guitar. He's a writer. Like there's no reason otherwise we would have done that. But it's like I play guitar, he plays guitar. So we, you know, kind of kind of riff on that. So I'm I'm always just watching for things that are there and I'll, I'll poke at them and see. And I won't force it, right? Because if I kind of poke at a thread and the person's just like, eh, I'm like, okay, fine. Hmm. I'm glad that you mentioned following the energy because that's, um, uh, I was said, I don't know how this works, but, but people often, I've had people say directly to me, like, I, I don't get it. How do I be curious? How do I, how do I do that in a podcasting context? How do I make, how do I, how do I action, you know, make that into a thing I can do? And the, the first thing is you have to spot the potential, I think, and looking for, you know, where did the guests suddenly go from, um, well, some guests are, some guests are, par- are paralyzed with nervousness. Some guests are frenetic with panic. Like I, I think I've seen it all at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but so you have to sort of like, there's different kinds of energy, but you're looking for a certain kind of energy. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's, um, if you've, if you've encountered different kinds of energy and if you, if you, if there's a particular kind, or if you have a way of describing what kind it's, that's a, it's a good question. And I'm, cause I, I, I would probably have to like step back and go thinking about it more analytical in the moment I'm operating in a very, I think, intuitive mm. sort of sense. Holistic. And again, this is, this is a thing that's, it's just, it's trained from years and years of my work of being in the room with people, working one-on-one with them and trying to pay attention to what's, what's going on and Mm. engaging with that. And so there's a lot of this, that's just automatic for me at this point, I think. Um, so, you know, if I, yeah, I, I haven't really tried, like I've had a couple cases and I'm thinking about this in the context of, of working as a, as a podcaster, um, where I've seen people whose energy was, in a, was off in a way that I think was may have impacted um, or limited the the interview a little bit, and I haven't yet taken the step of kind of intervening on that or making an observation or yeah. saying something to them. I had an interview recently where someone kept as they were making their points, they kept like thumping their table, and it was like. <laughs> And, and I was like, I didn't even realize it at first. And I was like, oh, should I say something? And I didn't want to disrupt them. And I, I didn't. And so now, of course, I've got a bunch of like noise removal work mm. to do in post-production. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you, you can just tell like, oh, if I try to change that, I'm going to derail that. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a, mm-hmm. a certain amount of, I call it verbal jujitsu, that's involved yes. in having a great conversation. Uh, and I've said this a lot. There's there's be a great conversation partner is one whole skill set. Some people are really good at that. Some people need to really work on that. But then there's the whole thing of create an audio experience for the listeners, which is built uh, at built upon a conversation. Like those are two different things. And I, I find that's part of the fun for me is like, how much can I get in here intentionally being curious or intentionally you know, like, look, a pretzel vendor, you know, like just doing random, uh, not literally that, but doing random sure. things, which then cause that person's energy to change. Um, so have you, ex- have you explored or experimented with anything or any interesting insights in that manipulative manipulation vein? I, I haven't yet. That's an interesting uh, thing. It's probably something that I'll, that'll end up trying at some, at some point. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but no, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah. You can, well, you can apologize to my guests who are the beginning. <laughs> I'll try it on. <laughs> you know, we'll see how that, how that goes. But, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it, you know, just in the context of the curiosity and w- what am I doing? And like I said, part of it's what sticks out to me. Part of it is this thing that I have, again, in, in increasingly learned and in, in 
is such a fundamental piece to the coaching work that I do, right? It's about kind of taking what you get and then pushing a little bit deeper, right? Just pushing a little bit further Mm -hmm. and asking something. And a lot of it is about what piece I think is either going to be what's going to be the most interesting, where do I feel like they have the most energy, or in some cases, it's about what do I think is going to be of most relevance to some of the folks who are listening to the podcast. And that will sometimes lead to me going a direction that I think is not the direction the guest would have gone. Uh, and that can again, go both ways, but I've, I've had a couple yeah, of guests comment. They're right. like, right. We, we like, I didn't expect that I would end up talking about that and they didn't seem distressed about it. So I'm like, good. And I would have, of course, edited it out if they didn't want to, but it's, you know, but it's kind of like we could go on these little, little turns. Cause I'm again, thinking from the context of what is my listener going to be wondering about and what am I trying to give them and how can I poke or probe a little bit deeper or more broadly in that area to, to get at it. Right. And that's, that's one of the things that's underlying it. But again, in the moment, I'm not consciously really thinking that I, 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 this is some of my preparation notes. I'll think about those areas, but in the moment I really have to just be kind of running, um, really spontaneously. And it's, it's really just a, again, it's conversation. It's improv almost in the moment because anything else, it just gets super stiff and awkward really fast for me. And that's not very interesting to listen to. I would, I would agree wholeheartedly. There's a, there's a couple of things you touched on in there. I would agree. And this isn't a word you use, but I often say podcasting is a performance art where the guest most guests are not expecting to be performing. I mean, some of them, like if it's doing the book junket, yes, they're expecting, but most guests are not expecting to be co-performing on a trapeze act with you. Right. Um, and, and you strike me as someone who is very mindful of, you know, um, I think it was Jewel and I were talking about our responsibilities that we have because of the asymmetry of power, um, because we're the person who's supposed to be leading and we're this person asking questions and we're the person doing editing. Um, so I, I love how thoughtful you are about all that, how you bring all those pieces. Um, you, you know, you're, you're not, you don't want them like arrayed on the table. Like these are the instruments I'm going to torture you with, you know, but like they, <laughs> they're like, they're like under the table out of sight. Like, oh, I have all these tools at my disposal, which I'm only using for good. Um, which made me think of, I love that this is so many, it's a conversation about curiosity with me trying to be curious about why you, <laughs> um, so from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, you came from a more, I'm going to say standard, um, uh, what people would expect therapy, like as a therapist. Right. Um, and then I'm going it, to, it seemed to me like you feel like you enjoy the freedom of, a, I don't want to say a more modern, but like a more generic coaching type of role. And I'm wondering, do you find that podcasting is like where you went next because it's a different kind of freedom or it's more free or is like, is that feel like a progression to you? It's, I I wouldn't say it so much as a progression as much as a parallel. Um, because it's not, it's not intended. Like, you know, I have, I have no goal of this being like the thing that I do instead of coaching by any means, but it's a nice parallel. It's another, um, what it really comes down to is it's another way I can serve the people and the audience that I'm trying to serve. Right. Because one of the things that is very, very true for the folks that I work with, the sensitive rebels, as I call them, is they often feel isolated. They feel alone. They feel like some weirdo. Mm. There's no one like them. And so when I have guests who have wrestled with some of the same things, who had some of the same struggles, some of the same thoughts, and I put that out there, I'm like, no, you're not alone. Listen to these, right? right? Here's, here's all of this. <laughs> but it's such an important thing for them to see, right? That that's there. And, um, and at the same time, same token for my guests, Some of them are people who have a hard time putting themselves out there, being seen. And so if Mm -hmm. I can do something to put a little bit of a spotlight on them and who they are, that is, I'm I'm happy to do that. Now, tying this back to what you were saying about the progression from therapy to coaching, one of the things for me that coaching is a lot more possibility oriented, I think, versus problem oriented, you know, a little generalizing there, but I think that's true. And I am, much as I can be very cynical about certain things, I am just a a infinite undying believer in the possibility of people and what they're capable of. And I think that's also a lot of what drives 
my kind of my curiosity and where my questions are oriented. It's looking for possibilities, looking for strengths, looking for connections. And how do we take those, highlight them, build on them and emphasize them? I think that's again, a driving force underneath. I'm not conscious of any of that in the moment I can tell you, but, but it's really there. Cause that's, that's the thing for me is my job as a coach is to help people be what they're truly capable of being as a podcaster. I'm trying to one, you know, shine the spotlight on these people in, in a way and, and illustrate them. And I think through that, it gives me an opportunity to do a similar thing, right. Of, of kind of highlighting things they might not necessarily have even seen or recognize themselves. And that's one of the things I do do. I'll be connecting dots. Sometimes I'll be like, this seems like this. And they're like, oh, I'd never thought of that, oh, you know? And that's, it's, it, it's a little bit of a coaching move, although it's not intended as such. It's more just a, I'm showing, Hey, here's this cool connection, or here's this this strength that maybe you didn't recognize or something. Hmm. Yeah. I think you've, you've connected a bunch of different ideas there that I, that I'm really curious about, but I'm also mindful <laughs> of our time. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, I think, um, I think one of the hardest parts of podcasting is knowing how to stop <laughs> at the end of an episode. Some people say starting is what I'm like, I have problems starting. I have problems stopping. Um, but I really liked how you, how you point out what you're, doing and, and that you're aware of, but what you're doing with the podcast and how that's a, a different way of serving. And I, I think sometimes people think, um, that, uh, people who create podcasts think mm -hmm. that there's like one, yes, every, every podcaster is different, but there's gotta be the one thing that I should be doing with my podcast. And I'm an inveterate podcaster. Mm -hmm. I, I have one that I don't have anymore. And three that I'm, it's like, I have too many of them. Um, I have a problem is, is podcast. <laughs> um, but I think your, your point is really good about this is what I'm doing now. And I, and you had said, I don't know that I have a specific, like, there's not an end game here. Um, I'm going to do this as long as it's interesting, uh, which I think is a great mindset. So yeah. Um, let's see. Have anything else you want to throw in? I think that's a terrific, any, yeah, no, I think that, 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 I think that I was going to say any closing thoughts, um, I love, I like you, the, the ending thing for me, I've always, that's, it is the, actually the other place where I tend to be fairly consistent is I'll usually ask people about kind of, you know, what are you working on now or what's coming up ne next for you is a place mm -hmm. that it's a, it's, it's one, it's a way of getting at the, you know, kind of where, where we are and what's the future, which is a, it kind of creates a nice closing point of sorts. And two, it tends to give them again, it's another opportunity to be like, Hey, what's, where's your attention and energy? What's exciting. And I may ask a couple follow-up questions around that, but that's one of the mm -hmm. ways that I've found to, to both work towards a closure point, but to do it in a way that is still got some curiosity and openness to it. And at least I think that's what's going on. I wasn't conscious about that. I'm just thinking through it as I'm talking here, as people can probably tell. Mm. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, well, Steve, thank you very much for giving me a half hour of your time today for us to get a chance to actually, I don't know that we've actually spoken before, but it was super fun. Not direct. Yeah, we know we haven't directly. I mean, we've interacted plenty in, in the various, um, yeah, in the Hollywood Square style, <laughs> right? And all, all that. So, but I, well, and thank you for, for creating this community. Cause I, um, it's, I think something there's definitely a need for, and I know there's no lack of, of work going and putting something like that together. So kudos to you for being the one willing to step up and say like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make this thing happen. Well, thank you for saying so, but it's totally my pleasure. It's just my guilty pleasure. I love doing it. I like it. I get to hang out with people I want to talk to. I get to hang out with people talking about the things I want to talk about. So, but yes, thank you for Very saying cool. so. All right. Well, let's call it a day. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Thank you.